Hello and welcome to Foodie Legends, your go-to source for the best foods to eat around the world and its history. In our previous episodes, we had a culinary journey in the Philippines to have a taste of their multicultural menu. By the way, have you watched our Philippine food trilogy? If you didn't, well, <laughs> just kidding. But please watch those videos. Trust us, it's a mouth-watering journey. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you guys can catch up to our latest food journeys. Thank you! Without further ado, let's go! Coming in at number one on our list is Cuatito Madrileño, a humble dish from Madrid that is loved by the peasants and elites alike. Cocido madrileño is a chickpea base stew prepared with a wide variety of meat and vegetables, which is just a good combination for a warm heart stew during the cold winter months in Madrid. Its main ingredient, the chickpea, has been an old and staple ingredient in the Hispanic cuisine. Thanks to the Carthaginians who introduced it to the Iberian Peninsula during the height of their power. As for the true origins of the cocido madrileño, the answer to that is... I don't know! Nobody truly knows the origin of this too, but most food historians agree that cocido madrileño was first cooked during the medieval period as an evolved form of the adafina, that traditional studies of the Sephardic Jews. The Sephardic Jews are the Jewish diaspora population who integrated themselves in the Iberian Peninsula. Adafina became a popular dish in Spain, and the stew used to be made with kosher ingredients or food items that are acceptable within Jewish laws. However, the anti-Semitism which was prevalent during the 15th and 16th century as well as the rise of the Inquisition drastically changed how Adafina is cooked, essentially evolving Adafina in the cocido madrileño that we know today. The fear of being outed as a Jew converted to Christianity were so strong back in the day that they were forced to add non-kosher ingredients to their Adafina such as bacon, lard, chorizo, and morcilla or blood sausage. Because of its cheap ingredients and its ability to fill the stomach, Cocido Madrileño became a well-loved menu in small restaurants and taverns around the city serving the manual workers. Cocido Madrileño is a hearty stew because it already has everything you need in a meal that you can only eat just the way it is, or just with a humble slice of bread. Its main component is the garbanzo, or chickpea, with an assortment of heavy vegetables added such as potatoes, cabbages, carrots, and turnips. Alternatively, you can also add green beans, chard, or cardoon. Cocido madrileño is a rich stew with a rich history, but just a reminder to our viewers out there, it is bad to be discriminatory against your fellow people. That's never good. It's never good. We don't want it. Coming second in our list is galinejas, or fried lamb innards. Yep, we know we already featured a lot of gut dishes in our previous videos. Of course! Galinejas are the intestines and the mesentery of a young lamb or cabritos, also known as a young goat of four months. This fried delicacy is almost consumed and sold exclusively in Madrid. Although, galinejas used to be a universal sensation and sold in kiosks and popular shops, and the ingredients used were not sourced out solely from the two animals we mentioned earlier. Galinejas was featured in a book titled La Galinejas by Gabino Domingo and David Sands. According to the authors of this book, there are four fundamental foundations in preparing excellent galinejas. First, an extraordinary quality of the raw material which was sourced out from a suckling lamb. Second, 
the intestines must be thoroughly cleaned to the point of spotlessness. Third, the intense care that must be taken on freezing and refrigeration of materials and compliance with the regulations. And fourth, and the most crucial, the mastery of the frying pan. This includes the cook's perfect knowledge of each ingredient, the exact frying temperature of each product, as well as the temperature of the fat to which the ingredients are fried according to the quantity. Galine has had humble origins. During the height of the now defunct municipal slaughterhouse of Legaspi in the 1950s, the intestines were a mere byproduct from the animals that were butchered. And so these would be ways were repurposed to be delicious meals that are affordable to the working class. In other countries, a luxurious type of meat is often served during special occasions. In the Philippines, their table has the pig lechon as the centerpiece. In the United States of America, the roasted turkey is the highlight of the night. In the Middle East, it's the roasted lamb or goat. In Madrid, they have fish. Yep, you heard that right. Coming in at number three on our list is the besugo a la madrileña, or baked sea bream, Madrid style. Yeah, baby! <laughs> because of its seasonal availability, the price of sea bream is quite steep. Therefore, this fish is usually served only on the most special occasions, such as Christmas. Besugo a la madrileña is basically a baked fish dish, coated with a special sauce made with garlic, parsley, lemon juice, and breadcrumbs, which will give the fish a slight crunch. This baked specialty has a very fast cooking time, so be careful and be attentive because overcooking it will damage the delicate nature of the sea bream. Besugo a la madrileña is often baked with its own fried oil, as well as onions and half slices of lemons. Once cooked, the sea bream is served with an assortment of vegetables, prawn, and a white stock made from fish bones and shellfish known as the fumet. In the 20th century, besugo a la madrileña was used to be served with a soup dish made from almond milk. Occasionally, the baked sea bream is accompanied by red cabbage to bring a diverse array of color to the dish. Sea bream has a mildly sweet flavor, a medium firmness, and slight flake with an overall creamy feel that almost melts in your mouth. Absolutely yummy! Coming in at number 4 on our list is another fish dish famous in the landlocked Madrid, the soldaditos de pavia. Tapas bars are common in the sidewalks of Madrid's, serving a wide variety of small-sized dishes that are served with alcoholic beverages such as beer or wine. The word tapa was derived from the Spanish verb tapar, which means to cover. Tapas were served in inns, taverns, or bodegas, also known as wine bars, and were originally composed of small slices of ham and chorizo, or as samplers of the dishes available on the menu of the inns. With the discovery of the new world during the Age of Conquests, various ingredients were introduced to the Spanish cuisine such as tomatoes, peppers, and potatoes. These newly discovered food items drastically widened the way tapas can be made, and this led to the birth of soldaditos de pavia. Soldaditos de pavia is originally a part of Andalusian cuisine, a cooking style known for their heavy use of olive oil and refining the art of frying. However, this tapa found its way to Madrid and stayed there as a favorite finger dish. Its name, which is literally translated as the Little Soldiers of Pavia, was attributed from the observation that this dish resembled the uniforms worn by the Hussars of Pavia Regiment, 
who wore red and orange combat jackets. Soldaditos de pavia are fried cod wrapped in a slice of roasted red pepper, just like bacon-wrapped hot dogs. The cod's flesh is sliced into strips, marinated in a mixture of paprika and lemon juice. Before frying, the cod strips can be placed in seasoned cold water and removed before the water begins to boil. Easy to eat because of its size, there is no wonder why Soldaditos de Pavia is a well-loved tapa to drink with a nice cold beer. As we have said in our previous videos, the art of roasting can be considered as one of the oldest methods of cooking. So, coming in at number 5 on our list is none other than the Cocinillo Asado or just simply known as Cocinillo. Oh my freaking gosh, you guys! The challenge of roasting is how you can make it a delicious food, despite the method's straightforward nature. One needs to consider how to enhance the flavor of the meat, but not to overdo it that its true flavor can no longer be tasted underneath the culinary embellishments. After centuries of trial and error, humanity found various ways to perfect this way of cooking. Roasting surely went a long way since the discovery of fire. Despite its seemingly intimidating nature, cocinillo is just like any other roasted dish. All it requires is patience, absolute attention, and a cassophony of herbs, some good Spanish olive oil, and a reliable oven. In 1725, a French man named John Botin and his wife founded a restaurant in Madrid named the Casa Botin. After the couple died, their nephew, Candido Remis, changed its name to Sobrino de Botin, which exists until today. In fact, Sobrino de Botin is known as the oldest restaurant in Madrid and in the world. Do not cite the deep magic to me, witch. I was there when it was written. Their signature menu is, well, the cocinillo. In their interpretation of the cocinillo, the suckling pig is sliced open and placed in a shallow vessel. The interior is marinated with paprika, salt, thyme, bay leaf, onions, garlic, parsley, white wine flavored with tarragon. The pig skin is then rubbed with fat and a small amount of water is poured to the vessel in order to prevent the pig skin sticking to the vessel's surface. The suckling pig will then be roasted in a brick oven for a few hours. Flip the pig and rub it with fat, then return to the oven to finish cooking. After some time, the cocinillo is taken out of the oven and rested for a bit. The result is a roasted pig with a golden crispy skin, hiding a juicy and tender meat underneath. Thanks again for tuning in with us here at Foodie Legends for our latest episode. I hope you enjoyed this video and got a nice taste into the hot and tantalizing dishes that Madrid has to offer. Before you go, be sure to like this video and click the subscribe button for more delicious content every week. We'd love to hear your thoughts too, so leave a comment and let us know what your favorite part of the video was or if you just want to leave us with a few thoughts. You guys are always awesome. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next one.